but based on your triad system it's like you're constantly just seeing level twos and level threes and level one patient you understand and if you have 10 different level one coming in the level one patients that are die emergency are going to be seen first can't just say the man over that side not breathing so well I'm going to let him breathe over there and, let me then, and then I'm going to go and look at the man where I have a callus or a cramp on him too a few much years. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Think Nursing channel where we discuss everything related to nursing travel and the lifestyle. But nursing plus plus plus. That is what my channel is all about so if you haven't subscribed as yet you know i hope that by the end of this video you will decide to go ahead and subscribe you know like share leave a comment and if you have any suggestions or anything you know you want me to talk about feel free to leave it in the comment below i am going to talk a little bit today about nursing in jamaica because a lot of times you know we tend to hear people say that oh the nurses in jamaica don't care or you hear that providers in Jamaica don't care for the patients any at all. And when you look at it, sometimes, yes, it comes off that way because of what is going on. But when you move to um, overseas, like when you move overseas and you realize and you compare, you know, both working in Jamaica and the US, there's basically, everything is totally different as we would have said previously. But one thing I'm going to focus on, I'm going to focus on what it is like working in the emergency room as a nurse in Jamaica. As in, you know, what the everyday situation, the reality of nurses in Jamaica look like. Alright, so first I'm going to touch on a hospital that I was working at. I've worked at that hospital for four years and the four years that I've spent at that hospital, we were always a short staff. And short staff in the sense that no care how much nurse they get the amount of patients that you have to care for it still doesn't balance out any at all because it's not a situation like you have a respiratory therapist you don't have a trauma team you don't have um lab technician coming to draw your blood you don't have a lot of um porters or what you call um transporters or you don't have a lot of lpns or lvns or you don't have ward assistance people to help you to help help with getting certain things done for your patients so the hospital that i used to work at was a very busy hospital it's like a major hospital in the town and uh, we see a lot of patients on a daily basis the hospital emergency department house probably like say about 10 beds for acute cases where you call a trauma bay we will have like an observational unit where we probably have like say 10 beds but some days those turn into 20 patients you're housing around that side for observation because patients are so sick and there is nowhere to put them the floors are already crammed the floors are already packed med surge med telly yes we call them medical floor female medical male medical male surgical female surgical that's what we call them in jamaica so those floors were usually like so busy they were like packed with patients so there's nowhere to put them so just imagine going in on a regular day for work and uh, you have those beds working with you are only given four nurses to start your shift you probably get one or two ward assistants or what we call a, um, a LVN or what you call a licensed practical nurse so you'll have two of those on the floor but sometimes there are other floors that are already short staffed because there are so many patients on that floor that take the one or two nurse um, nursing assistant that you have or what assistant that you have and place them on a different floor so you're down to still only having four nurses working in your emergency room and then in, in your emergency room remember you have acute cases you have your trauma cases coming in and uh, when you talk about trauma cases coming in we're talking about situations where when those patients are coming in with their stab wound when patients are coming in because a bus overturn when a patient coming in because um, you have gunshot wounds and multiple shots being fired and multiple persons being injured plus you have persons who have a con on them too who have headache 
who has a lot of things going on that are non-emergent at the time you know then what happens is that you're gonna have like overcrowding in the emergency department not a case where you can say to the patient all right go home yes sometimes we we have our providers who will go into the, um, the triage department and they will literally talk to the patient hear what is going on and then if it's a case where they just need a prescription one will be written or if it's a case where they just need a, a rep, uh, not really a referral but if it's a case where they just need an x-ray or something they probably just write it and have them get it done as all patient because sometimes the service is not available for like a CT scan, MRI, certain ultrasounds, the service is not available at the hospital. But back to the emergency room, where on a daily basis, nurses are being chastised about, you know, not being caring, because when we get into America, things change and everybody change when they get to America. Yes, everybody change when they get to America and start working in a system where it is well equipped, it is organized, enough so that nurses are not feeling the blunt of working in the emergency room because when you have nurses in the emergency room in jamaica working you have to think about you being the technician you're the transporter you are the nurse you have to ensure that you're being the patient and at the same time you still have a floor that you still have to manage it's not a case where you have uh, situations like you know you have a technician there and you have labs being ordered and somebody come and draw the labs or it's not a case where you have um transporters available around the clock and everybody is meeting this time where you talk about sepsis time and all those things no that is not there because we already short staff and even if, if it is there the time period would still not be met imagine walking in for your shift and the first thing you see is 10 patients in your emergency room on your beds in the emergency room and then after that what happens is that you hear that there's a shootout down downtown you have to try now to find where you're gonna put those patients when they get there you don't know how many patients coming in you don't know what injuries they've gotten so you have to start clear out house and when you start clearing finding out who can actually go and have a seat on a bench and continue getting their IV, um, IV hydration or the medication treatment, you know, so that you're prepared enough to take care of those patients that are coming in. Patients get upset, relatives get upset, which is totally understandable because I, if I were in that position, I would be very upset as well. But you have to understand that when we talk about triage, and when we talk about pre preparation, it's not only for the America. When places don't have resources, you still have to prepare as well. So when nurses go and say to a patient, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to take you out of this bed and have you put over to, this, um, to the chair to continue treatment. Yes, sometimes I think we do it incorrectly because of time. Because when you hear that an ambulance, not an ambulance, because we don't really have ambulance pulling up with patients like that. But when you hear that a vehicle pull up to the emergency bay with a patient with a stab wound and you have no beds to put a patient on. Can you imagine going over to a patient and be there like, excuse me, ma'am, I hope you're doing fine. Today, we're going to have to unfortunately get you from that bed and put you in a recliner. And we're gonna get you some socks and we're gonna get you some warm blankets in the meantime because we're gonna have to get another patient on this bed that patient is gonna want to know why they're getting out of bed why you have to choose them you understand like people ask a lot of questions and nothing is wrong with that you can't really ask all of them question there because there is not much time time is life you understand so you find out that nurses will go there and uh, they say to the patients that we need to get you out of this bed and have you sit over there to get your your treatment just because they're trying to rush and prepare that bed because they're going to clean off the same bed because remember i tell you sometimes you don't have uh, anybody to go ahead and uh, You don't have anybody to go ahead and uh, clean that bed for you. 
so that that patient who is lying outside on a in a car with a stab wound or a gunshot wound there's no way for you to actually resuscitate that patient and that patient can be anybody relative it don't have to be the relative of a VIP for us to actually put some rush into it but when you don't have anywhere to put the patient everybody get upset when you finally try to find out who is the most ideal client to get out of bed people still get upset when you're resuscitating and you don't have anything to resuscitate with because there is lack of resources available or supplies available people get upset when you resuscitate them on the floor people get upset then take picture them say all oh, the nurses don't care the doctors don't care but nobody is looking at the fact that you're trying to pump out this person's chest to have them get a pulse nobody remember that they don't remember it the only thing they remember is that you have them on the floor resuscitating them and they take a picture and they make it be viral and then uh, you have uh, hospitals and you have whichever nurse or doctor was involved in that being chastised by the public and everybody now want to take away the little money that nurse is not getting because they think that nurses are not being professional or the providers, the healthcare providers are not being professional at what they're doing you understand because sometimes we're not able to explain to them and yes when we get to America you will probably look at it and say that we we are now doing things differently because uh, we are here in the America it is because there are so many resources available so you don't have to find yourself doing certain things it is when you get here to the US and persons travel to the US and see the care and hear how patients are supposed to be treated. Yes, we know how patients are supposed to be treated, you know. But the thing about it is that when you don't have resources on hand, the treatment is going to be a little bit different. And it's not going to be different in the sense where you don't care. Because a lot of times I know that we, we turn and we do certain things that we're not really supposed to be doing. I mean, I'm gonna call anything on 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 the on the on the on the YouTube here and make the hospitals them look bad. But there are a lot of times when we have to do things so that patient can actually survive. I remember there are days when we had to be doing nebulization, you know, treatment, and we have to be switching out because there is not much supplies. You have so many patients who are there who needs oxygen who needs a nebulization treatment but you don't have enough canister you don't have enough nasal cannula so you have a bucket with some bleach water and you wash it off as best as possible as a nurse or as the ward assistant that is working with you and you put it and you let it dry so that another patient can come and use it there are a lot of days when we have to be doing that you have to take off the oxygen canister from this patient and put it on this patient because this patient oxygen saturation, yes, is not the best. It might be at 95, 94, 92. And the patient don't look distressed, but you have somebody else now who is at a 70% on their oxygen saturation who definitely needs that oxygen more than the other person. And as nursing professionals and as doctors, it is our duty and our responsibility to triage and decide on who needs the medicine at that time you can't look at it and say oh well both of them need oxygen and we're going to say okay we're going to give the one that have a better oxygen saturation because this one look good and this one dress up in a in a um cardiac pants and wearing louis vuitton bag no we don't discriminate like that we treat you as though you're supposed to be treated oxygen saturation low we're going to give the oxygen to the one that really needs it you understand i remember there are days when we literally have no beds patient season and we have to literally put those patients on the floor on mattress to get them stabilized i remember there are days when we have busload of patients overturning and we have nowhere to put them you can't even do a, a spinal precautions on that patient because you don't have nowhere to put them except on a bench you understand which is not ideal because even if you put them on a bench and you say lie down here 
you don't have a C color sometimes to put on to these patients. So really and truly, the patients are not getting the care that you definitely really want to give, the textbook kind of picture. But when you get here to the US and you see how things are, then we go on the internet and we say, oh, well, the nurses in Jamaica, the health system in Jamaica is very bad. Yes, it is very bad. But at the same time, the blame cannot be solely placed on the nurses. The nurses who are caring for the patients or the doctors who are caring for the patient. It is a system problem. And not until we fix that problem, the system is going to be the same. So you can have a nurse and a doctor who is really caring. They take care of the patient to the best of their knowledge. But when you look and you see the relatives not happy about something, sometimes the relatives, they still cuss you out. Them still cuss and make it seem like you're not doing anything. But what else can you do? You just have to take the cussing and go on. You understand? So I don't really understand, but I know that the treatment that you know we give in Jamaica, yes, a lot of people will say it can be better or it should be better, and the nurses are just rude and disrespectful. Well, yes, sometimes I know that happens and uh, it is an unfair situation for the patients who have to deal with it but you have to understand the stress that people are being put under because if you are at work and you are being abused ver verbally abused like almost every day you understand and then you're expected to care for this patient just the same or if you decide that you're not going to care for the patient because you went step aside because you don't want anybody to make you feel as though you know you're being bullied into caring for them then you hear that it's another story the nurse over there so rank the nurse over there so don't have no manners then disrespectful they don't want to take care of the patient but nobody understand what the nurses are going through you understand doctors put orders in it is the nurse's responsibility and the nurse alone and god who is actually doing all of these work you understand you have your one ward assistant sometimes and the one ward assistant is being taken to another floor because that floor is like packed with patients and when you talk about patients we're not talking about patients that are ambulatory we're talking about patients that are bedridden they can't really do anything that much for themselves and they're needed to help out with bathing feeding so a lot of times people might come and say well but the patient don't eat from morning because really and truly there's nobody there to help with feeding because if you decide that you're going to try and help out with feeding the patient the scenario is going to play out like this eventually you're going to hear that there's a shooting or there's an accident because most of the time the emergency room in Jamaica functions as a trauma hospital it's like a trauma center because there's so many things going on. You understand? So you're going to find that when you're supposed to go and try and feed a patient, if only four of you or five of you inclusive of a ward assistant, seeing a total of about, say, about 150 persons for the first shift in the daytime, then what is going to happen is that somebody going up and not get feed because the nurses are going to be taking care of patients them have medication to do them have to resuscitate patient i remember say you still have to push the patient over to um radiology department and if the patient need to go to to island radio radiology or they need to go and get a ct scan done the one nurse have to go over there so sometimes the nurses don't even end up and get a break they don't even end up getting a break so a lot of times people might look at it and say oh the nurses them over there are not doing anything they're really doing a lot of work but it's just that because you don't really understand what their work entails on a daily basis it might seem like you know they're not doing anything they're just being rude they're just being disrespectful and i get it i understand what you're saying but i just want one day for us to actually sit down and look at the role that the nurses play in jamaica especially the emergency room nurses the ones that are on the front line because a lot of time 
them bend them back them broke them back a lot you understand to care for these patients and the only thing that they are being given in the end is disrespect you understand and then they compare they compare and say oh when they go to america yes them treat them better than how them treat us down here but it's not a matter of say we treat them differently it's a matter of the resources are here now so you can't get a chance to spend time and take care of your patient just like how the textbook say it's supposed to be taken care of you can't take care of your patient no just because there is more resources available and when we talk about resources we're talking about human power we're talking about supplies that you would normally use to do dressing you're not talking about one little big container dressing or gauze available and then you're going to use it to do dressings for 40 different patients on a surgical floor no we're not talking about that we're talking about you have individual wrappings for dressing sets available for patients that you use and you discard afterwards so the care is going to look a little bit different the care is going to be better because you can sit down now you don't have to be frowning too much because you don't have John over there and call Acosio. You don't have Tom over there and call Acosio because, you know, their baby is sick. This one have a con on them too. This one is here for eight hours. This one over here is dying. And you only have the four nurses running up and down in the department. You understand? You only have the four nurses. While here in the US, you have nurses right around the clock because it is more of a business so business places are going to provide the necessary resources that they 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 need in order to keep patients coming it means that they need 30 nurses on your floor in order to get the wait time down to 30 minutes they might go provide it and they might go pay for it but if you have a system like us in jamaica or a system in jamaica where if you want an extra nurse, it's hard to come by. Then what is going to happen is that you're going to have the wait time going to be as long as 8 hours, 10 hours. And it's not a matter of say you're deliberately doing that. But based on your triad system, it's like you're constantly just seeing level 2s and level 3s and level 1 patient. You understand? And if you have 10 different level 1 coming in, the level one patients that are die emergency are going to be seen first. You can't just say the man over that side not breathing so well. I'm going to let him breathe over there and, let me then, and then I'm going to go and look at the man where I have a callus or a con for him too a few much years. No, we can't do that. We have to keep the ball rolling so that patients can actually get the care that they want. Because then what will happen is more work for the nurses because they are going to start having to resuscitate that patient who can't breathe over that corner rather than focusing on a corn that you're not going to do anything about you understand so a lot of times we tend to forget that we have the knowledge we have the knowledge but it is only because of what you're seeing as a public then you tend to feel as though we don't care we don't understand we forget we neglect no it's not that we have to just work with what we have and everybody i try to protect them license and even though you don't hear people talk about them i was so that often in jamaica we still have to protect with license we still have to protect our license because without your license there's no way for you to actually work and then not only that it only worsens the situation when it's time for you to actually try and do other things because can you imagine you know down there just to take care of a patient and because the patient for that side um smile or because they're wear a louis vuitton you go over there and you totally forget about the patient who is literally short of breath having chest pain but the patient look look kind of okay to you so because of that you decided to not manage your time or manage the patient or prioritize seeing the patient and then that patient becomes 
you know, lifeless. There is no stopping when it comes on to patients because sometimes the patients, they look as though they are not sick. But when they do their vitals, some people just barely are all on to, you know, because their vitals are abnormal, their oxygen level is very low, they are very tachycardic, meaning that their heart rate is very fast. And uh, you just need to go ahead and get that patient connected. But then what happens is that you're going to hear that, oh, that patient just come in and the patient look okay. Yes, the patient might look okay, but it's not a matter of all the time you're going to say, well, because the patient look okay, you just go ahead and treat. No. So a lot of times the misconception is that when you get to America, we treat our patients differently. And the reason for that is solely because of the resources that are available for our patients to be seen and be cared for because without that if we had all of this resource in Jamaica I am sure that a lot of nurses wouldn't be migrating but when they talk about you know not being able to take a break because you don't have enough staff to cover you can't go to the when well, you can't go to the bathroom it's not like up here but you can go to the bathroom but down there it's difficult for you to actually get a break because sometimes it might just have the three nurses and you just want to be with your colleague and say okay then this is the situation you understand but when you have patients now not not being cooperative not being understandable then it's 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 just it's just sad it just makes the situation difficult for nurses and then uh, everybody gets upset about it nurses get upset they don't want to take care of you and it's not a matter of say they don't well i definitely don't take care of patients who are being disrespectful and that is just my standard because can you imagine you take care of a patient who is being disrespectful and then uh, something happens to that patient the relative going to blame you know they're going to blame you so nurses are peer persons they know why they do what they do so if somebody is being disrespectful they're going to be threatening towards you not take care of them don't take care of them you have the right to get that patient reassigned reassigned to somebody else because you don't want to have that that on your shoulder when something go wrong you hear say you the nurse who never care about the patient you know, and then the file lawsuit. No, I'm mean, going to run them joke there. Don't run those joke with patients. You understand? You study too hard. You don't know the mindset of some persons. So just stay far from that. If somebody said they don't like you, step aside respectfully and hand over the care and make sure you document it. If they don't like you, do that. If them like you don't have to write it in the chart you know because persons when they, they, they they're happy about something they're happy about the care the product they don't do reviews you hardly find people doing reviews the ones who do reviews are the ones that are not happy about something so if they're not happy about the care they're gonna be doing the reviews I don't know but big up to the nurses in Jamaica and big up to the emergency room nurses I know that um, when I was there it could have been better and uh, opportunity come opportunity go you take it you leave it whichever one you walk with god go with you until then thank you so much please remember to like share and subscribe to the channel for more and turn that notification bell on all right bye